So the question is, how, lo how long do these electrodes stay in? Now, for these patients, this is a clinical, th this research is piggybacked on top of a clinical, pl cl uh, clinical therapy. So they stay in for one to two weeks. But the other, I think, kind of getting at your question is, how long can they stay in? And that's a question which we're investigating right now in monkey models. Um, now, people have done research in the past in uh, uh, other types of animal models, and they've shown that th these uh, um, electric constructs can stay in for over a year without a degradation in signal. So essentially, you're asking about bit rate. Like, how, how much information can you transfer? And that's, and, and ba the, essentially in the uh, brain-computer interface and neuroprosthetics world, that's, that's kind of the kind of benchmark of, of kind of the, it's almost the intellectual arms race, where we always want to push and f see how, how much information we can get out so that you, not only are you doing one-dimensional one control is a certain bit rate, two-dimensional control, say XY axis, is another kind of level of bit rate information transfer. Then you get to three dimensions and then multi-dimensions. And right now, with electrocorticography, we're at two dimensions. Um, we're working towards two dimensions with a click so that you can select. In the single unit systems, they're at uh, four dimensions now, meaning you can move in three-dimensional space and grab. And uh, I don't think we've d defined what the information limits are yet, but uh, we we're continually able to uh, kind of, with uh, evolving computer speeds and signal analysis methods, moving up and up and up. So I don't think we've defined our limit yet. So the yeah, question, question is, uh, like, is, is there, are, have people gone beyond the fact that just action potential firing rate as far as information encoding is certainly there's um, numerous way that, w ways that the neuron um, encodes information, not just in its firing rate, but in terms of the connections that it makes, what type of uh, neurotransmitters it's releasing, what type of neurotransmitters it's receptive to, and how those other uh, neurotransmitter receptors uh, activate it or inhibit it. Uh, there's a lot of work going on in, in that front. Um, uh, some are, and one of the one of the things that um, have it, people have really learned is that, for instance, it, memory and the way that in, in our responsiveness is certainly uh, affected by kind of synap what we call synaptic plasticity, like how again how responsive it is and how uh, to certain transmitters. Do we know, for instance, like the kind of the C, G, A, and T of uh, how information is good. I'd say we're probably at maybe like, you know, C, G, but I don't think we have all the letters yet. Um, we certainly know, for instance, that action potential firing rate, frequency, location, um, and how those frequency change all are responsible for encoding inf information. And we've been very successful at utilizing those letters to essentially um, provide types for, you know, certain cognitive intentions, ranging from motor function you know, such as motor direction, as well as, um, for instance, we're starting to decode phonemes, basically components of words over speech cortex. We're able to get at that. So, but I don't think we have all the letters yet, but I think we're getting there. Right, do you foresee a time when this fellow mentioned downloading, you can actually upload thoughts one to the other person? Assuming that we have, again, I, I, don't, think it, I don't think it's impossible. I think that theoretic, theoretically, I think we're very much in the early stages right now. Right now we're decoding. Uh, primarily, I don't think we're at the level of encoding, although people with visual cortex and auditory stimulators are starting to do a little bit of that, but it's, uh, it's, the, it's the early stages of that.